In the last video, I looked at using sockets on the Pico W to connect to internet services. We talked about how so many of our modern internet protocols are based on TCP IP socket communications. So being able to use them from the Pico W is helpful in making our Pico W a connected device. But what if the Pico W sends sensitive information? The sockets we've used so far are not secure in any way. So whether you are using FTP, Telnet, HTTP, or MQTT, at the very least, your user credential information for the connection could be stolen from the network. To protect our data from leaking, we need to use a secure socket, and that means using TLS to secure the connection between the Pico W and the server. TLS is the successor to SSL, though often old people like me use the terms interchangeably. In this video, I'm going to show how to establish a secure socket using TLS between the Pico W and a web server. I'll focus on making sure the traffic is encrypted. You could go further into validating the identity of the parties involved, but I'll leave that level of security for now. This video is sponsored by my friends at PCBWay. PCBWay are your go-to solution for PCB manufacturing, 3D printing, CNC, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding, all your maker needs. So when I'm designing my Pico W project boards, I can upload them and get quality PCBs produced by PCBWay. You can see some of my boards that they've made for me in my other videos. So go check out PCBWay now, or wait until after the rest of the video. Our transport layer is what connects our device to the web server. It sits underneath our HTTP protocol and on top of the network layer that connects our device. At the bottom of our stack, there can be lots of physical devices that our data is passing through. The Pico W is connected to an access point or router for Wi-Fi connectivity. That's probably connected to a network switch. Certainly lots of switches and routers if the traffic is going across the internet until it finally reaches the server hosting the web page. That leaves lots of places where eavesdropping of our traffic could happen and our data be stolen. So the first thing we could do to raise the security is to encrypt the data within our transport layer. The technology of SSL, Secure Socket Layer, now largely consumed and extended by TLS, the transport layer security, allows us to do this. TLS uses certificates to set up the encrypted connection. These certificates are based on public key encryption technologies. Each device will have a private key that is never shared and a certificate that is. That certificate is made up of the public key and a signature of the public key by a trusted certificate authority. Someone that can tell us the certificate really does belong to the device or service we've received it from. TLS establishes a secure and encrypted session between the two parties. At a high level, TLS starts by exchanging certificates and negotiating the encryption for a symmetric encrypted session. Public key cryptography is great, but very processor intensive. So TLS only uses it for establishing a symmetric key and algorithm to use to encrypt the data traffic. In this video, I'm going to focus on establishing an encrypted session for our socket. There are lots of further ways we could extend the security. We might want to pre-share the certificates so we can validate each party, or use trusted certificate authority to validate the parties have been validated by an authority. We could implement a band list, so perhaps our web server bans Pico W's that we know we have lost. The certificates should get regenerated and issued on a regular cycle. How will we do that with our Pico W? We could implement a TPM, Trusted Platform Module, to handle the security of the connection and certificate validation for us, taking the load off the processor and storing the keys in a more secure location. In the last video to produce a socket, I used three libraries, the Pico SDK, LWIP, and FreeRTOS kernel. 
To secure the socket, I'm going to add one more library called Wolf SSL. Wolf SSL is a well-documented library for TLS under the GPL version 2 license for open source software. Commercial versions and support also exist for Wolf SSL. So on FreeRTOS, we're going to use a vanilla project setup with a standard set of porting configurations I tend to use on my projects. You can find the configuration options I set in the port FreeRTOS kernel folder in the example. Once again, I'm going to write just two threads in the example. The first is the boot or main thread that I use to just about all of my projects. It's what I use to set everything up and to run some background monitoring. Then the test thread is really going to do the work. I'm not going to go into detail on FreeRTOS within this video as we are focused on sockets. I do have a Udemy course which covers the whole of FreeRTOS kernel library for the Raspberry Pi Pico, Pico W or any other RP2040 board. I'll put a link in the description below. I talked last time about the configuration of LWIP to enable sockets and it's the same for this one. This is in the port LWIP folder. Wolf SSL as a library also needs some porting to the Pico W. The port folder for Wolf SSL contains two things. Firstly, the user settings we need to tell Wolf SSL a bit about our platform of the RP2040. Some of that is set up here in the user settings.h file, and a few further settings are put globally in the Wolf SSL import.cmake file for the project. These are things like the byte order of the words, memory buffers, and of course, choosing which algorithms and key links we wish to support for session encryption. Security relies on good random number data, and the library wants an entropy source to build out the seed value for its random algorithm. Entropy is not that easy to do on the Pico W, though the version 1.5.0 of the SDK has made some significant improvements and produced a pretty good random module. For the example, I've chosen to use an approach shared by Demo in a blog post on using the ring oscillator on the Pico W to generate a random value. I recommend reading the post, and I'll put a link in the description below. The example is going to do an HTTPS GET to a web page back from my company website. To do the HTTPS GET, we're going to need to go through the same process from a socket perspective that we did last time. We just need to do a little work to add security into these steps. The way I'm going to provide these functions is to place them into a transport layer as a C++ class. This is going to look uh, to the outside world just like the insecure TCP transport I wrote last time. The basic functions to open a socket, send data, read data, close a socket are all defined as methods on the left hand side here as before. I do need two new static functions to help me map the Wolf SSL library to the underlying socket. These are shown in yellow here. The DNS lookup step is identical to last time, so I'll skip the explanation of that. On opening the socket, we need to establish our TLS session and therefore set up Wolf SSL. I've stripped out the error handling from the code on this slide. The example on the repo, though, has the error checking intact. A lot of this code is the socket handling we've seen previously. We are adding to this to set up Wolf SSL contacts for our connection. Linking it to the socket read and write function, IO receive and IO send. Commonly, we would be adding in certificates and keys in this code. Here I'm avoiding this by just setting that I don't want to do any SSL verification. That way I can trust the library to just connect and invent a temporary key on the fly. Good enough to encrypt the session without authorizing any of the parties involved. Once the socket connection is established, we can create an SSL object. This is TLS socket and becomes the handle on the TLS connection. We establish the TLS connection using the wolf SSL connect function. 
Though actually, as soon as we start to read or write on the, to the socket, the library would automatically renegotiate a session anyway. I'm using it here though, as I think it helps the narrative on what is going on in the example. The HTTP protocol in HTTPS is actually just the same as HTTP. It is the secure transport that is the key. So we just need our send routine to be using our TLS socket. So send is relatively trivial in transcend routine. We simply call the wolf SSL write function. That function will do the TLS encryption and use the IO send function to send data to the actual socket. The IO send function itself is really just a wrapper around the send function. The major work here is in translating error codes appropriately so that the wolf SSL function can handle any error situations. Reading back the data from the socket is also fairly trivial, certainly for HTTPS. Read is just a wrapper around the wolf SSL read function. The wolf SSL read function will make use of the IO receive function to read from the socket. Again, this is just a wrapper around the LWIP receive function. The main work here is in translating error codes for wolf SSL. So the demo is going to connect to my company website, drjohnea.co.uk. We'll use the standard HTTPS port of 443. The HTTP GET is exactly the same as we used before. This time though, we expect the web page to be returned rather than a redirection we received on the non-secure port. The test code is in the class test trans and it's almost the same as for our normal socket test. So I won't talk through that again here. I've built a little project to demonstrate this over on GitHub repo area. I've put the link in the description. The example goes through three tests. Wi-Fi connection test, HTTP GET over a plain text socket, and HTTP GET over a TLS socket. So using Minicom to observe standard out from our Pico, we can see it connect to the network. The HTTP GET response, which is going over a plain text socket to port 80, returns a redirect request. The HTTPS GET response which is going over a TLS socket on port 443, returns the HTML page. So we confirm that all of the tests pass. Understanding sockets is really important to make use of Wi-Fi capabilities of the Pico W. Securing them with TLS is a basis of the modern internet. Using Wolf SSL, this is a relatively easy thing to do. I use the same approach from this example to build sockets to run MQTT protocol on, the basis of most IoT systems. My course on Udemy, IoT for the POW, talks through how to use these sockets and provide them to third-party libraries to connect to MQTT brokers. As soon as you enter the connected world, you have lots of things going on at once. It therefore pays at this point to have a real-time operating system framework running on the Pico something that will allow us to run concurrent tasks and communicate between them. I've used FreeRTOS kernel to do that in this video. If you want to learn more about this, then why not check out my Udemy course on FreeRTOS on the Raspberry Pi Pico. I'll put links to both courses on the video description. Thank you for watching and supporting the channel. Please click like, subscribe, and hit the notification button to get more content from me. Bye-bye for now.